In all fairness, 2014 was probably one, if not the worst year for games being released. Accuse it or not, due to the sudden quick release of the PS4 and the Xbox One, with publishers being totally unprepared, but 2014 was the glorious year of the re-release. Starting in January with people groaning that Tomb Raider was being re-released after only a year, and then cheered that Grand Theft Auto V and The Last of Us was coming out again after only six months, with it finally culminating in no one giving a shit when Sleeping Dogs was re-released. But what else we received in 2014 were a load of games that were unfinished glitchy messes. And I'm not even going to mention the games that are postponed this year to finish up the unfinished glitchy messes of 2013's releases. Oh, what, 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 uh, oh, behind, where is? It's behind us. I did, I shot him in the face. What's your problem? And all E3 had to offer us this year was, everything's coming out in 2015. So saying that 2014 was a bit crap is a bit of an understatement. Now I did have some likes. I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed Far Cry 4, even if it is a paint job of Far Cry 3. And I recently picked up a cheap copy of Shadow of Mordor, which I'm absolutely loving. Captain Toad was also a strong contender, but then they gone done set it back till early 2015 in Europe, so that's off the list. But my game of the year, in terms of the hours I put into it, amazingly, is Watch Dogs. Now before you start hating on me in the comments, I mean I'm just as surprised as you are. Aside from the graphical downgrade and the glitches, Watch underscore dogs, which is probably not that funny a joke anymore, is, when you take a long, hard look at it, actually a pretty decent game. For starters, aside from the cliched Avenge story and outlandish hacking, well, Aiden Pierce is less a hacker, more someone who's just downloaded a really cool app for his iPhone, is a serious sandbox game. And in a world of most sandbox games trying to out-satirise and out-offend Grand Theft Auto, Watch Dogs felt like a breath of fresh air. The hacking part itself was a great concept. I mean, it's basically the superhuman powers you have in Assassin's Creed, but grounded in a plausible reality. But the concept of using security cameras to eliminate enemies in the vicinity of electrical obstacles was great fun, and really added a new angle to what could be done in a sandbox world. But what I enjoyed most about Watch Dogs was the online missions. The multiplayer modes themselves were a bit of a mess for me, but for one-on-one -on -one matches where you or someone else would randomly appear in your game to hack you was something I'd spent hours playing. I know all Ubisoft did was make a glorified version of Hide and Seek, but your opponent coming up close and almost discovering you was some of the most heart-pounding moments I've ever experienced in playing a video game in the three decades of me playing them. Being involved in other people's single player games has huge potential in the future of gaming. Not forced to interact like, say, Destiny, but just minimal interaction with other people, like passing ships in the night, would make the world far more believable, even if they do just run around like mad idiots. But did Watch Dogs deserve the hate? Well, yes and no. It was released way too early, and anyone who played it after subsequent patches would see a vastly improved game with a ton of new features and modes. But both the press and gamers only care about a game at launch, so blame it on the fickleness of games and press, or Ubisoft for releasing an unfinished game. A better game released months after release is ultimately irrelevant. But as for my choice, any other year this would have been largely forgettable. But in the desolate wasteland of 2014, and for what I played this year, Watch Dogs is the game of the year for me. Let's hope 2015 is a far more difficult decision for me.